At a very young age, I had PTSD brought into my life through sexual abuse, and I've lived with it my whole life. I've used cannabis since fifth grade, off and on, and obviously not at the time knowing that it was a medicine the way that I know it now. It really has helped me fight my demons, um, my social anxiety. I don't smoke nearly as much as my counterparts, but I don't need to. You know, cannabis affects every human being differently. To me, it's a blessing. Um, watching um, some of these other veterans medicate. I did uh, one year in Iraq during Operation Iraqi Freedom and after I got out I was diagnosed with chronically severe PTSD with, with direct relation to combat. Uh, before I started using cannabis I started to isolate myself from society and I was taking off the Valium that I was given from the VA. So I started using cannabis more and once I was able to get the uh, authorization for a prescription to use cannabis medically and the more that I used it the more people around me said I was doing better and I started to break out from my isolation and because of the result of that I got to become part of the uh, 22 Too Many organization that Patrick and I started, which is awesome because it got me out of my house and now I'm back in society and I don't feel like I'm not doing anything anymore. Cannabis is actually the thing that showed me that I had PTSD and taught me that I had PTSD. I mean, it started where I, I, I started it for pain. Um, it worked better than the pain meds. I replaced alcohol and everything else. And then here I was as a nurse, after surgery, was feeling better and was coming off my pain medication. And uh, my son was about 16 years old and I haven't taken my medication all day. He comes home and, why aren't the dishes done? And you know, I overreact. And my son made a comment like, Dad, I think you need to go smoke a bowl or something. And I was like, why is my son telling me to go smoke a bowl? What's up with that? The next day, my wife comes home. Again, I haven't used cannabis all day long. I was angry about something. And my wife goes, when's the last time you medicated? I'm taking this for pain, but I'm getting a very different message here, that it's treating something more than just pain. And it took me down a rabbit hole and found out you know, that I did have PTSD. And then it made me learn how uh, I can utilize cannabis to be the best version of myself. 22 Too Many is the epitome of grassroots, all-volunteer organization. We survive off donations. It was born out of a medical cannabis, safe access. You know, they weren't called dispensaries in Washington State. They were called safe access point. And we had ours from 2011 till everybody was ordered to shut down in 2016. But um, that's where 22 Too Many was born. I opened Rainier Express in Olympia with every intention of just making money. And um, man, that's when my, I became a believer. Seeing hundreds, then thousands of veterans coming through our doors, we were like, man, you, you know, we're seeing what this is doing for us. We got to get the word out there. What can we do to help get the word out there? And the first thing that we noticed was that PTSD wasn't on the list of qualifying conditions for medical cannabis use in Washington State. And that was our first mission. The way we survived down in 22 Too Many is mostly through our um, 22 Too Many Veteran Support Depot program. Since we lost Rainier Express and all of our funding in 2016, we became a 501c3. And we wanted to go back to the cannabis community for support like we, did, we, like we got from the cannabis community with Rainier Express. So we started this program. So what, it, what, it, what does it mean, the, the, a support depot? When you walk up to Green Lady store, they have one of these 22s in the window and that tells a veteran, okay, this is a support depot. We get a veteran discount on the 22nd of every Every month they have a day of awareness where their bud tenders will wear the armbands and buttons and talk about veteran suicide to their customers and on the 22nd of every month we get a $222 donation from these retail shops to our charities and that's what keeps the lights on down in our headquarters so another part of that program is say a veteran walks through the have a heart door in Belltown we would never have met that veteran so if he walks through there needing assistance of any kind like we were talking about earlier if they find their way to our door in Olympia if they find their way to a door in any of our support depots they're gonna get a little piece of paper and that piece of paper has our, our um, hotline number on it and if they get in contact with us we can have a veteran to them you know with, within an hour to meet with them and talk with them and see what how we can help them when it comes to legalization we're trying to voice it as much as possible and be as clear as we can and as open as we can be about it and not hide in the darkness about our cannabis use and how it helps us because the more that we talk about it the more people start to listen and that helps create the change and it only takes one person to go out there and say that hey 
this is what's helping and the next person that picks up after that from hearsay goes hey i'm going to try it to see if it works because nothing else is helping me we just keep moving on like that word of mouth and, and getting out there uh, once word of mouth started getting around then we started getting into the bigger places like hemp fest and canacon and emerald cup where they give us veteran panels to where we get to speak and voice our opinions and our experience on how cannabis is helping us and the more that we do that the more it's helping to push for legalization because the more we talk about it the more people are going to have to listen you know we do a lot of stuff in olympia right now but we're trying to grow those things to other areas you know we have the yoga in olympia and the mixed martial arts and things like that we can find providers in other areas to help get discounts to vets to help provide space to vets for veterans can come together and, it, and it's whenever we come together and especially whenever we come together and do service that we see just real improvements um, with uh, just how veterans can deal with things. I've participated in everything that 22 Too Many has to offer. I was one of the founders I helped start the group and if I'm not willing to go through it, I don't see why other people would be. I found that yoga is great. If my body can handle getting in there without dislocating a rib or a disc in my back, I would do it more often and the same goes for uh, kickboxing. Excellent ways to release stress and uh, it's another good way to break isolation and get around people in society again and start making some friends. And in, in doing so, you find more people that can listen to you and also get the word out about what's going on so things can change in your life for a better. We want our veterans to be a part of society. We want veterans to be happy, um, want to come to our shop, want to volunteer, want to be a part of something. We want to give them mission and purpose, right? The system right now is set up against our veterans. If anybody just mentions the words cannabis and PTSD, we lose every time. And that's a, that's a big misconception. So many veterans would find relief from, from PTSD with cannabis. Over here, we have 22 suicides a day, 8,000 a year. And you know, with cannabis, we all know that it's never taken a human life in the history of the world. You can use cannabis and and still be a, a good father one of our veterans I, I won't speak his name but the home that his child lives in, he gets to see his child 12 hours a, a week doesn't get a sleepover his, the mother right now is living with a registered sex offender and his child has to live in that home the judge claims that that child is safer in that home with a registered sex offender than with this veteran with PTSD that uses cannabis it just breaks my heart that that's happening right now. And that's just one instance. I could sit here and talk to you for hours about how many veterans are um, losing the rights to their children because they use cannabis for their PTSD.